Uh, who will take the responsibility of the 15 minutes? <laughs> so, so the Nisa starts with the ayah that is usually, actually before I talk about this, I want to talk about the beginning of the link between the Nisa and Ma'idah. As I had talked about the links between Ali Imran and Bakra. The Nisa starts with, Ya Yuhal Nas, O Mankind. Ma'idah starts with, Ya Ayuhal Ladina Aman. And the links, they will continue as I will explain. The first ayah of Sutton Nisa, Ya Yuhal Nas, Ittaku Rabbakum Allazi Khalaqakum Min Nafsin Wahida. This ayah is the one of the three ayahs used in the nikah. If you remember, the Prophet used to choose this ayah amongst two other ayahs for doing nikah. And one of the reasons is that one of the three major themes of this surah, one of the three major themes, is about the household life, is about the family life. And so because the household life is one of the major themes of this surah, and how the household is made, this ayah was a good ayah the Prophet ﷺ chose, as you know in his sunnah, because the rest of the, sunnah, the rest of the surah talks about the household life. Now, in society, the most downtrodden group, and so ayah number one is, Ya yuhan nas ittaku, O mankind fear Allah. Now, ayah, now the, ayah number two and after that, what continues is the general discussion about the household life, but within that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about certain groups. The most downtrodden group in any society, generally speaking, according to the Qur'an and generally in society, is the orphan girls. They're orphans and they're girls. So the, both of these, you know, even though the Qur'an came to, uh, this, the surah is called Surah Nisa, which means what? Women. So it's here to protect, you know, لَا يُحِلُّ لَكُمْ أَن تُرِثُ النِّسَاء The surah says, it's not allowed for you to inherit women, you cannot possess women. The Qur'an says. But before that, before it talks about women, it talks about the orphan girls and their rights. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, uh, And give the orphans their money. And this is why, because how do orphans get their money? By inheritance, right? So the next topic after that is, three. there are three ayahs, two of them together, one at the end, is about inheritance. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses in detail and this is one of the miracles, I, I can't go into the details of this, but this whole science of, uh, of wirasa, the whole science of inheritance that's in these two ayahs, in the last ayahs, amongst the last ayahs of the Nisa, the, the whole, uh, you can say, system of inheritance is discussed, so that it's clear what these orphan girls will get, and then also in general. But also I want to mention, of course, uh, the Qur'an says about the inheritance that لِذَّكَرُوا uh, مِثْلُوا uh, the women, they, the one man gets the example, uh, the equal to what? Two, two women. Why? Because arijalu qawwamun ala nisa. Men are the caretakers. They have, they have the financial responsibility. I'm not talking about the real life situation on earth. Okay, that you know we're forced to have two family incomes and so on and so forth. I'm not talking. I'm talking about what the Quran's flow is. Quran wants a society in which the men are responsible for the women, and therefore the inheritance. The larger portion of it goes to the men because they're responsible for that responsibility of the taking care of the women. And then the other thing that is mentioned after that, that is very, very important, and that is the idea of the muhsanat. This is an idea even Muslims don't realize that there is a term the Quran uses for married women. Muhsanat, muhsan, you know, hus, you, the famous book, Hism al the, the to be in a fortress. A, a free Muslim lady is described in the Quran as, a, as somebody who is married. If she is married, she's in a fortress. When you're in a fortress, you're protected. When you're in a fortress, all your, uh, your needs are given to you. So muhsanat are those women. It's a term of the Quran for married women. That the Quran describes that وَعَاشِرُوهُنَّ uh, بِالْمَعَرُوفِ And be with them in a good way. Live with them in a good way. And they have to be treated like they are, they are like in a fortress. They have to be taken care of. And so this is the Quranic concept of the part of the male and female uh, relationship. But of course, then that also means that the men are the caretakers of the women. Qawwa means to establish. Qawwa means the men are the caretakers. They are the leaders. 
they have the position, and you know, uh, there's actually a new study, I was just telling Dr. Hunt the other day, that one of the most desired qualities that a, a female has for a man is that he is has he leads her, right? That he has some he is he's a little bit more dominant than her. Not aggressively, like tyrant, tyrantly dominant, but a girl wants to, if you watch any, uh, again, I don't want to go into the details, but if you watch any movie about love, the guy is always the strong one. Allah in Surah Al-Qasas described Musa والسلام, by one of the girls that married him, إِنَّهُ لَقَوِيٌّ amin That he is strong and trustworthy. This is what women want. So, الرِّجَالُ قَوَّامُونَ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ But, by the way, I want to mention a small point here. The word رِجَال is different from ذَكَر. ذَكَر means male. Rijal means men. And the word Rijal is used in Quran for the spiritually uplifted men. Rijal qawamuna ala nisa. Rijalun la tulhihim tijaratu wa la bayun an dhikrillah. The men who do not forget Allah in their business. Rijalun sadaku ma'ahadu Allah alayhi. Those men, Rijal, who have fulfilled their promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this word Rijal is very specific in Quran for the spiritually uplifted, uplifted man who stands on both the, uh, the leg of this dunya as well as akhirah. Anyway, so uh, then after that, I want to mention uh, that after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses this whole issue, over here I want to also mention, there's a very interesting, towards the end of, the, uh, the, towards the end of this juz, there's a discussion about up to what point, you know, Allah discusses, that can you at what point did to start to think about divorce? This is also discussed because obviously it's allowed, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hints towards what is the barrier after which you then should think, okay, maybe it's not going to work between me and my wife and we should think of maybe an alternative. And that is when you cannot be just to each other. When you cannot, uh, when you cannot do other just to each other. Meaning, you're always going to be fighting, you're always going to be doing injustice to each other, always fighting, always fighting. Then you know, then you should think, okay. Meaning the idea is if you do injustice. This doesn't mean that if, oh, I fought with my wife, now I should think of divorce. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like when you're really fighting as in like, you know, you got boxing gloves on and you want to prove you're right and she's wrong and teach her a lesson and etc, etc. Okay. Uh, another topic, after this whole topic of the family life is discussed, also in here is the discussion that if the... You know, this is the ayah that also says that the man is allowed to discipline his wife. The threat that he can use force to uh, maintain her from being disobedient, meaning having an affair or talking to other people or misusing his funds without asking him. In this case, the Quran does say he can use discipline. That doesn't mean now, oh, you know, you abuse that. It just means that you have the legal authority to claim that authority, that I have that authority. It's a psychological thing, and it's psychologically very powerful. Because you can't say somebody's a leader and then give them nothing to, to, to enforce. But again, I don't want to talk about that right now. Um, now, another very important topic is now because the Sharia is being completed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then after that, He also gives a list amongst the family life is the list of the people that are uh, that can be your mahram. Like basically, the household is where you're informal, right? You live in informal, you can be informal. And then the list, the, so the list of the people you can be informal with, you can say. And the list of the people you cannot marry, basically, is given there. So that you know who's, what consists of your household, and who you're allowed to marry, who you're not allowed to marry. And then, then that also tells you, okay, so this is where I can be uh, informal, so therefore outside that I have to be somewhat more informal in terms of my dress, my demeanor, and so on and so forth. Then another topic that, because now Allah SWT is bringing all of these, uh, the Sharia here, one of the things that the munafiqeen dis wanted to do is to make a, a, a distinction between, okay, Allah, yeah, we believe in Allah. But they had a problem with the Prophet. So they wanted to make a distinction between, oh, but, you know, we believe in Allah, but you're the Prophet, and we don't like what you're saying. We don't like, they had a problem with the Prophet. And they had a problem with submitting to the Prophet This is a quality of the munafiqeen, the, the people that are muzabzabi bayna dhalika la ha'ulai wa la ha'ulai. They're nor here nor there. They're not with the kuffar and nor with truly with Islam. And so they're in between. And they get, uh, the, you know, Prophet Muhammad said one of the signs of the Day of Judgment is people will make fun of the sunnah of the Prophet So basically this, the people, they, they, they feel an aversion towards the Prophet, but they claim love for Allah. And Allah is saying that I will not accept this. This is unacceptable to me. So, uh, let me just uh, mention one ayah. Uh, 
We have not sent any messenger except he be obeyed. That's why we sent him. And in another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ I swear by your Lord, لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ They don't believe. They're not, believers are not believers until if Muhammad gives a judgment and you accept it. وَصَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمَ And you can accept what hit, surrender to the judgment of the Prophet. If you can't surrender to his judgment, <coughs> then the fact is that Iman is meek. You need to work on the Iman if that is the case. And that's not you as in you, but you know, all of us. Okay. Um, then the topic of Jihad starts. And again, who is going to help all those poor orphan girls? Who is going to help the downtrodden of society? So over here, in a very a new way, what is Allah is bringing Sharia, you have to establish the Sharia. You have to, you can't just have laws and they're just being read in Quran, they have to be brought to society. So over here now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is over and over again in Baqarah, Al Imran, and, uh, and uh, Nisa, and then also in Ma'idah, again, struggle, struggle, struggle for the cause. What are you willing to do for the struggle of Allah, for His cause, for the cause? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَا تُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ Now what is wrong with you that you don't fight? You're not willing to fight? Are you willing, you know, uh, what's his name? The founder of the United States, what, what was his, uh, one of the Jacksons? He said, I will die for my country, right? And this is, I will die. I will die many deaths for my country, right? Or, or people say, give me freedom or I'll die. I mean, you're a Muslim, so it's not that, I, you know, you have to take out swords. This is not, I'm not talking about the media. I'm saying your commitment, your commitment to Islam. وَالْمُسْتَعْفِينَ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ وَالنِسَاءِ there are the weak people on earth amongst the women and children and men who are who are who are downtrodden and they pray to Allah, Rabbana akhrijna min hadhi al Oh Allah, take us out of this this pathetic situation that we're in. They are mustadafin, they are weak and downtrodden in society, and they pray that somebody will come like Umar bin Amr bin As came to Egypt, for example, or Umar bin Khattab came to Jerusalem, for example. Some, some hero will come and and release me from the from the chains of, of oppression that I'm under. So Allah subhanahu wa taala says, وَمَالَكُنَّا <laughs> Uh, then, also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, this is also, there's an ayah that's repeated three times in Surah Nisa, and that is, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغْفِرُ لَا يُغْفِرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرِكَ بِهِ شَيْءٍ Allah will never forgive shirk. This is the one thing. وَيَغْفِرُ دُونَ ذَلِكَ مَا يَشَاءُ And other than that, He will forgive whatever He wants. What time? How much time is left? Sisters, brothers are complaining. <laughs> then, of course, regulations during jihad are given that you have to pray anyhow, no matter what. Then, uh, towards the end of the juz, inna anzalna ilayka al kitaba bil haq, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have sent this book to you in haq, in justice. Why? Why did Allah send the book? Why did He send guidance? لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَ nas. To, you will do justice between people. You will do hukum between the people. Because the concept is if Allah gives a law, it has to be just. Right? So this is the concept. If you want justice, you have to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, I uh, think, uh, I have two minutes? Well, okay, I have one and a half. So uh, towards the end, there are two, two important things that I'll mention. One is uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the munafiqeen and their role. This is the, uh, this is the surah that mentions uh, إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ They are in the lowest place of the hellfire. Why? Because one of the roles that the munafiqeen always played, they always said, oh we believe, we believe, but always when Muhammad was saying, oh what about, now this is the hukum of Allah. And which hukum? There were two commands the munafiqeen hated the most. Right? Be good to your neighbor, love that. Nice to other people, we love that. But two, qual two things they disliked. Number one, to fight. Oh, you know, why is he trying to get us killed? And the other, to spend in the cause of Allah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them when they stand up for prayers, they just stand in prayers lazy. 
This is why the, amongst the companions of the Prophet وسلم, the quality of the munafiqeen was they wouldn't show up for Fajr and Isha because it was dark. Right? The other prayers they would show up because they have to, because people can see. So anyway, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our commitment. So this is the point, is that we have to be committed to Islam.